Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 27 of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we moved Arizona up north to Quebec. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner of the video. And if you do enjoy this episode, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. So today we get into the 2020 eight slash 29 season it has been a haul up to this point we have so far just gotten one stanley cup hasn't been the most spectacular franchise mode we won it two episodes or two episodes two seasons ago and since then well to be honest the nordiques haven't exactly been all that good we haven't had anybody really playing at a crazy high level We've only had a handful of guys actually win awards as far as Connor Bedard, you know, Shane Wright, guys like that go, but really it's been a bit of a rough franchise mode up to this point, so we're looking to push for some more success heading into the near future. So, again, looking at this team, we've got, uh, got a pretty solid group of players on our hands, a crazy good roster to be honest, and we actually have such a good roster that we have guys like Tim Bodie and Gabe Velarde scratched, as well as Artem Safranov. Like, there are there are a handful of crazy good players that just simply aren't getting playtime because of the fact that they, you know, don't fit the scheme fit all that well. So, we're running a younger group of players here this year as far as goaltending goes, as well as, you know, we're putting faith in the team. So... To get to some comments from last episode, first off, uh, Mr. Bog said, I think you should keep players like Ricard Thorson, obviously, and build off of them. And defense is important, so try to solidify it. Keep up the videos. You are underrated, so thank you. I appreciate the support. Uh, Winchester said, Etanios, I love the videos. They've helped me in my franchise mode so much. With your tips, keep up the videos. So thank you, Winchester. And Maniac Gamer said, I can't stop watching these episodes. Can you make an Oilers franchise mode and make sure to bump up McDavid's stats if you do because he is not as good at NHL? Um, so didn't entirely understand that comment. What I think he was trying to say is that, um, you know, like bump up McDavid's stats because he should be better than he is. I think that's what he's trying to say, but I might be wrong. But again, thank you for the comment. And uh, yeah, so I think what we're kind of hearing is that uh, Mr. Bog, anyways, is saying that it might be worth it to get rid of players like Clayton Keller or like Jacob Chitron, who are really expensive contracts overall. Um, and to be honest, they haven't really contributed to the team's success all that much. If anything, they've kind of slowed the team's progression down over the last few years, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, we still have so many younger players in this team that I wouldn't exactly be surprised if clearing up some guys like Chitrin and like uh, like Keller would make a difference as far as team development goes. So anyways, um, enough said there. I think we're going to get into this season pretty quick. We're going to be doing a full calendar sim this episode, but of course I have to do all my draft class scouting here as I haven't done any of it yet. And uh, yeah, once I get that done, then we will jump in to the full calendar sim. Okay, so now we're going to sim to the regular season. Uh, we got to allocate some budget here, so I'm going to assume that the majority of this is going to go into arena operations. We might spend a little bit on... Yeah, advertising and promotion should be fine. I don't see why we're going to need too much more of a coaching budget. Maybe we'll tap a little bit out of that, but you never know, right? So we'll allocate it that way. I don't care about promotion nights. Georgievich hopefully can stay healthy. Um, I would appreciate if he could. Let's see, Wilson as well, okay. And apart from that, okay, Clayton Keller too. So, uh, we got scouting well underway here. Let's see how it's looking so far. All right, and looks like it's just going to be another top-end elite kind of draft class. Um, interesting player here in Bennett Reed. We'll keep an eye on him. And apart from that, not too, too. Oh, okay, NHL ready potentially in Skrbek. I was wondering if he was going to be decent, and it looks like he very well might be. Lundell even has... Oh my goodness, these guys are all like NHL ready potentially. This could be an extremely strong draft class. We'll see, but yeah, okay. Um, not, not a bad first glance here, which usually is not the case. Usually I'm like, well, who knows, but this year it's like, wow, okay. Top end's looking really, really sturdy, so... 
um, for goalies. NHL ready goalie potentially in Jack Leahy, really? Are you sure about that? I don't know if I entirely trust that, but who knows, right? He's probably an elite goalie, so we'll keep an eye on him for sure. And one year ETA on Ola Albelin. I mean, hello, Albelin, how you doing, right? Like, probably going to be like a fringe starter, but still. Okay, um, so that's kind of the first glance at the draft. Um, apart from that, of course, we got to get through the calendar. Um, and I would assume Winnipeg might be one of the best teams in the league that we got to worry about again. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty... Pretty straightforward. They got a 35-year-old Mark Shifley at this point, but uh, what's his name? Mar Merrick Kopecky has turned into quite the player. Same with uh, Cole Perfetti. And, of course, they've got Gregory Karkner, who's their best player without a doubt. Uh, the team has actually gotten worse. They don't have nearly as much defense as they used to, but that's okay. So, um, all right, I think we're ready to go here. The only thing I'm kind of interested in I don't know if we can do it, but if we can, I would be over the moon about it, is um, goaltending equipment. Based on the fact that Djordjevic is going to be our starter for a while here, and I'm wondering, I don't think it's, yeah, it's not the Arizona mask, that's what we got going currently. I'm wondering, yeah, the Avalanche don't have a Nordiques logo, unfortunately, because that would be so cool if they did. Yeah, and there's no, like, all-time or anything either. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so I guess we'll stick with the Coyotes mask just as a tribute to this team. But uh, the fact that Djordjevic has also got that many X-Factors is just crazy. Like, he was a very good draft pick for a second-round goalie. Where did we get him? 39th overall, yeah. So he's, uh, hopefully he can develop and really become a staple in the NHL as one of the best goalies around. But, uh... But yeah, we're going to get into the sim. We're going to start off with, uh, I guess, just the rest of October here. It's not a very long month in the calendar, but let's see how it goes to start off. So, Lucas Powell immediately out with concussion, but we beat the Panthers, and we lose to the Jets, and we lose to the Kraken. Okay, so not a spectacular start. Against Toronto, we win, and then we lose to Columbus, and lose to Ottawa. Okay, so really a rough start here this season. Unfortunately, uh, that is how it goes sometimes, so... Darren Thorne hasn't exactly become anything special. Powell, same kind of thing. I mean, he's like borderline making the NHL, but the guy I'm actually interested in here is DeAndre Thompson, and we'll see if he develops or not. I mean, Solomon Peverly also has finally kind of started to to make the league here, or like borderline make the league. Um, DeArne looks fantastic as a backup. Um, he could potentially be playing over Gustafson, so we'll we'll look to potentially make a move there if we have to. But we, but we beat the Canucks and we beat the Golden Knights and we beat the Kings. Okay, so we are five and four after the first month. It looked like it was going to be a bad month, but uh, we kind of turned it around there. So not a bad start. How is the team doing as far as stats go? Shane, right? My goodness, ten points in nine games, not bad. He always gets off to a hot start and then kind of drops off usually. So. We'll see if he can keep it going or not. Ricard Thorson and Matthias Silvergaard with quite a few goals each, leading the team there with 5-4. and four. And yeah, nobody else really performing to a crazy standard. Uh, Connor Bedard off to a brutal start here to uh, begin the year, so that's unfortunate. But what else do you do really, right? Do we... Do we put Thorison up on the top line? Like, I, I don't know what to do in that situation necessarily, so... Maybe it's just, maybe he needs a guy like Barrett Hayton. Who knows, right? I'm, I'm trying to figure this out right now. Obviously, we want the defensive capabilities, but this top line has not been very good to start things off, unfortunately. So, um, I'm thinking Barrett Hayton might be the move here because, obviously, he has 90 defensive awareness in comparison to Keller's 88. But Dard's got 91, seriously? I don't... Really? Like, like, actually, is this what we're dealing with? Is Silvergaard better? Oh, Silvergaard's got 96 defensive awareness, so maybe we put him up there. Go, like, Tamerna's there. Okay, that's a strong lineup. I like that. Um, so, yeah, let's give this a try, maybe. This this could be interesting. Um, I'm going to put Silvergaard on the right wing because he's got more of a shot. Oh, no, he doesn't. 
he should have more of a shot than Keller, and he doesn't. Um, so that's ah, that's interesting. Okay, so as far as defense goes, Chitrin off to six points off the start of the year. Five for Bo Meester, four for um, Soderstrom. So yeah, not a bad start for the defense. They're looking better than last year, but uh, the goaltending again has been a little subpar as well. So all right, so here we go as we head into. November now obviously we want to try to win as many games as possible but again gonna depend on how the team performs and we start off with two wins okay make it three make it four and then we finally lose to Tampa there and then go back to back losses oh we lose DeAndre Thompson that's not great and we lose Grayson Ortiz so multiple injuries and a three game losing streak is not good. We lose Connor Bedard with an injured elbow, and my goodness, the team is, oh my goodness, injure all my good players, hey? Rocky Cambeats goes out too. Holy moly, that was a stretch of injuries if I've ever seen one. Um, Yeah, ouch. That was brutal. Okay, so we're going to put Thompson back in here. He is over a point per game. Talk about a fantastic start to his AHL career. How about Muldeen? Michael Muldeen, not bad, 14 points in 20 games. He is uh, starting to grow, which is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted to see. How about, okay, 12 points for Olofsson, 14 for Shanahan, and nobody else. Oh, 12 points for Staubitz. Seth Staubitz has been pretty, pretty stellar there. 13 out of 16. Raphael Dernay is by every means asking for a call-up. He should get one. The only issue is... I don't actually know if we can give him one right now. So, I'm going to put Gabe Velarde on the top line for now. Oh, what is Safranov doing in this lineup? Seriously? Oh my goodness, talk about a messy, messy lineup. That is not what I wanted. Okay. Okay, we can try playing it like this for now, but we are so injury-ridden that... Man, that is a brutal way to go here. So, um... They're eligible to be dressed, which means they're still injured. Um, the only guy that can actually go back in here is, um, what's his name, is uh, Ortiz, which is good because I want a forward plane over Safranov. I love how no defenseman got injured, though. Like That is actually kind of a feat on its own that, that nobody got hurt. So, ooh, Lars Lander, not off to a great start this year, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know what to do to fix that, really. He's only got, yeah, yeah, he has not been good. Shane Wright has. He's a point per game. But everybody else kind of stinking it out so far. So, um, all right, let's 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 see. We're 13 and 10. How did November actually go? We went 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 4, lost 3. So we're 4 and 3, 5 and 3, 6 and 3, 6 and 4, 7 and 4, 7 and 5. Okay, we went eight and five, so not bad, not bad in that month. Eight and five is a pretty decent record, but we uh, we have been below average as we've lost more than less here. Um, but yeah, Shane Wright exactly point per game. The Washington Capitals are the worst team in the league with ten points right now, so I would expect that we beat them. But how is our injuries looking here? We've got. Thorson back on the, okay, so Bedard's back tomorrow, and Thorson's back on the 5th, so that will help with kind of getting the team back in shape, but yeah, we just, we just took so many injuries there, so, um, Roadrunners currently leading the AHL, so they're in a good spot, but again, that is pretty much solely Dayarnay with his play and how he's done, so let's advance, um, get Connor Bedard back in this lineup here, swap, who even got swapped in for him? I think it was Tim Bodie. So I'm going to put Bedard in here just for now and then move the lineup around. So we're going to go like that and like that. And I think Lander's better than Velarde on faceoffs. He is indeed. So play it like that for now. And holy, can you make any more noise upstairs? Anyways, <laughs> okay. So, um, we get Thorson back after this game, so I'm just going to advance a few days rather than jumping into the calendar. Okay, so Thorson's fully healed now, apparently. Apparently. Um, 
So yeah, we'll swap him in. Again, he's 14 goals in 19 games. Man, Thorson's been fantastic as well. So like, what do you even do about that? Like, the second line's playing way better than the first. And I don't know why. I, I wish the first line would play better, but they just haven't really seemed to get anything going. I mean, I think it, it is Connor Bedard just not quite having the right line mate there in Clayton Keller. And I don't necessarily want to get rid of Keller, but at the same time, it's like, oh my god, Bedard's out again. Oh man, I can't believe that just happened. Connor Bedard is having the worst luck in a season that I've maybe ever seen, so... In reverse, hey, that's like never a, never a zone ability on offensive defensemen, so I would assume he's probably a two-way. Um, anybody else actually looking good in here? Bennett Reed again. We'll see. This is so... I have had some of you guys ask about like how I do my scouting and things like that. I, I sometimes like to go through and just like individually scout players if they look good. I mean, the high elite potential is maybe high top six. But, like, when I see a, an NHL-ready-looking player like that, sometimes I'll go in and scout them. Sometimes you don't get enough of a scouting report to really judge a player properly. There's apparently a lot of high elites in here. I don't trust that. So, if anything, Atkinson's going to be an elite goalie. Um, Lundberg, again, NHL-ready. So... There are defensemen galore in here, but is it actually going to be a matter of are they going to have decent potential? Probably probably not, but you never know. A guy like Hunter Cook looks really good, potentially. But again, how are you actually able to judge this until you get a full scouting report on these players? So, um, Again, Jack Leahy just... Even if he's a one or two year ETA, looks so interesting as a goalie. And then after that, kind of goes downhill pretty quick. Is that another Rockets goalie? Holy Kelowna Rockets. Apparently they just have the best goalies in the world. Uh, Wolinski wasn't one of those guys that I was like, oh yeah, another great goalie. But Ola Elbelin, maybe. Very possibly. Could be a, a good goalie, so. After that, not as much going on here. Edwin Yashin looks okay. But you guys can always go and sort by potential too, right? Like, yeah, sure, there's, there's all these high elite guys. There's supposedly high elite guys that I do not trust by any means with their potentials. But you never know, right? They might actually turn out to be high elite. It's unlikely, but... Until the full scouting report comes back, you never know for sure. Um, this is interesting. Sylvester ranked at 5 by our scout. I mean, he doesn't actually have that great a stat line. They think this Par Erickson guy's better. So, again, I find that interesting. I don't necessarily believe it. Roy Ference even looks like a decent player. Doesn't have X-Factors, unfortunately, but a lot of these guys don't, so. Um, all right, too soon to tell on the majority of these scout reports. A guy like Andrew Horton might be elite, but is more than likely not. And again, Austin Ivany, not much there. Ezra Hawes, though. Gotta be, yeah, gotta be higher up in the draft, I was gonna say. How about this guy, Ted Rugier? Looks like he's got X-Factors galore. Alright, we'll keep an eye on him. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how the draft is looking. Nothing crazy, and starting off the month here, we lose to the Canucks. And we also have Elliot Goalie go out with an injury. Thompson's up to a 79 already. Maldine looking great. Okay, those are my two top candidates for potentially making the team here over the next year or so. Uh, goalie fits on that middle pair. Okay, so we're going to put him in here. And of course he's a right D, because why not? One more. He's a left. Yeah, okay. Olafson is having a pretty solid year. Okay, that's what we like to see. 
All right, and we lose another one, and then we beat Pittsburgh, but Connor Bedard is back, so hopefully that can make a difference. Again, Bedard just hasn't been able to get on a roll here. Nine points in 19 games. He's been below average, and um, I'm wondering, maybe do we do we try him on the second line? Because, like, I don't know what else to do here. He's, uh, he's not able to really get anything going. Like, jeez, Tavernas has more points than him. Keller's got 18, so he hasn't been great. 15 for Silva has been below average, and then 20 and 22 and 27 and 27. Those guys are playing great, so I don't know. Maybe we just let Christian Tamarnas grow, but Dard and Keller can go on their way as the team is still winning, but we lose the go to an injury and lose another game. I didn't even know Connor Bedard was injured again, but apparently he is. Oh my god, can, can the injuries stop? This is just too much. We're having, like, two to three injuries over the span of a game or two. Like, that's just not okay. Come on already. Safranov scores one goal in his first five games. Not bad, but... Okay, we're losing, we're losing, and we finally get some wins there, but... Man, I just... Uh, I can't stand how many... Sh the, just the sheer amount of injuries we just had to face there I can't believe that so if the team could stay healthy for the next couple months that would be great and we lose Kubina immediately okay you know what no that's it that's it stop stop I'm turning injuries down I cannot do this anymore what are CPU injuries at like 55 percent seriously this is ridiculous they're at 25 okay I'm turning them down to like 10. I just, I can't do this anymore. We have so many injuries that the sim is ruined by it. So, all right. Can we get on a roll here, Quebec? I mean, Shane Wright has started to drop off yet again. I, I call it every year. The same thing happens. So, is Quebec going to change anything? Probably not. You know, we kind of, kind of do the same thing every year. And yeah, we're sitting... Behind the Lightning, you know, subpar performance as usual, but, um, like, the team has never actually finished in first place. We've been, highest we've ever finished was third, got knocked out in round two that year, highest after that has been fourth place. So we're in this very strange kind of team dynamic and spot, but if we can actually stay healthy here and not face a bunch of injuries despite turning injuries down well that would help and again we lose deandre thompson uh, michael Muldeen is healthy and is playing well so i like where he's at he's got a good shot of making the league eventually but we beat la and then we lose to florida so man it has just been a rough go for not so much for the tucson roadrunners they've been really good and deandre thompson has been getting assists at a crazy rate, 94 passing. Um, he's a strange player, though, as a sixth-round pick because he can't really skate, has no physical, but is actually really decently sized. Can't take face-offs, but, yeah, he's just, he's just a strange player overall. So, um, looks like we're going to have the calendar glitch here going again. Okay, players I'm going, going to potentially trade are none of these guys. Um... But guys that I might look to move consist more so along the lines of um, like a Gabriel Velarde or a <sighs> Patterson hasn't really grown. How is Nolan Reese less valued but has a, over a point per game? What? That, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. How about a Connor Timmons? Nine points in 40 games. That's not good enough. So, I mean, Matthias Silvegaard has turned out to be a legitimate player for us over the span of the last couple of years, but, like, even Connor Bedard just hasn't really been all that good, unfortunately. And at 23 years old, I don't see him getting better over the next bit. Like, he's half a point per game right now. Why? He was number two overall behind another fabulous franchise player and hasn't developed. And I just, I don't understand it. I don't get why he's not better. 
See, the thing with a guy like, um, like Magnus Olofsson is we could pull him up right now and he wouldn't miss a beat in the NHL. A guy like Michael Muldeen is developing at a fantastic rate. A guy like, where is he? He's even further down here and he shouldn't be. DeAndre Thompson is an 80 overall at 20 years old. He has serious potential to make the league. Artem Safranov, again, low valued and shouldn't be. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this team and why values are the way they are, but how do you control it, too? Philip Gustafson is probably going on the trade block here, because if he doesn't get his act together, man, like, we, we gotta get something going here, so. Alright, we get Peter Kubina back. Gabe Velarde will get subbed out for chemistry purposes. And this team's gotta get rolling. I, I don't even know what's going on right now because the calendar's glitching, but we seem to be losing more often than not. And with a 24-20-1 and one record, it doesn't look all that, uh, that great. Bennett reads a three-year ETA. I don't really want him then. <laughs> okay, so moving on in the month here. We beat the Rangers, and we beat the Canadians in overtime, or a shootout, sorry, and then we lose in a shootout. Oh, and Georgievich goes out with back spasms, unfortunately. So we are going to have to pull Raphael Dearnay up. It's not the best scenario ever, but he gets a boost, apparently. Okay, and we get this Jackson Sims guy, who I've never heard of, um, joining our team. So McFarland's now our best goalie, which is a little bit concerning, but that's okay. Sims is an undrafted goalie. Beautiful. Okay. And, well, the team is playing pretty well. He got some decent development going on. I don't know how um, Olofsson isn't developing more. But what do you do, right? So, we then lose to Colorado. We get Grayson Ortiz back, who, again... Should be making a difference, but he's only 10 points in 40 games. So, yeah, the bottom six, again, just has not really been carrying their weight, unfortunately. <sighs> Even the top six is still, like, 43 points for Shane Wright. Oh, well. Everybody. Everybody's just subpar here. So, I think we're going to put the lines in a blender. Uh, we're going to go like that. Try these lines instead. Uh, maybe we even try We can't play three snipers on one line that just doesn't work. What if we try Ortiz up on the top Doesn't really make a difference with Keller. Yeah Again could be better What if we try that? That could be interesting. Silvergard's actually, he's got what, 33 points in 49 games, so not bad. Um, I don't know, maybe we try this. I, I'm interested to see if we can get the lines going here at all, or if they're just going to stay consistently bad. So, we're giving Bedard worse teammates, but guys that are big bodied more so like, bigger than him, so hopefully they can, you know, protect him from getting injured and stuff like that, but yeah, putting the lines in a blender is hopefully going to be the strategy that works, because I don't know what else to do. We do get Mike Georgievich back, and at this point, I'm thinking we potentially send Gustafson back down instead, but that's the thing, is he cannot be waived unfortunately Darnay won one out of one made 23 or 27 out of 30 saves and was good so we have to send him back down unfortunately but he's like such a good goalie that I feel bad for doing that put Georgievich back and then Sims goes out for Darnay Okay, so, Georgievich is fully healed, beautiful, and against Nashville, we lose 2-1, and then we... Seriously! 
one and three to start off the month. Fantastic start, boys. Make it two and four, three and four, three and five. What a month in February. That is the worst month of hockey the Nordiques have maybe ever played. And yeah, we are we are sucking right now, not gonna lie. Um it might be trade season here, and I don't know who we're trading because <sighs> I'm not impressed with Connor Bedard. 29 points in 50 games is terrible. He's not developed properly, but like Thorson's below average. Keller's actually been half decent here recently. Barrett Hayden's been good. Christian Tamernis has been good. Like certain guys are playing fantastic. Even Chitrin's been pretty solid. But other guys, such as Peter Kubina, Grayson Ortiz, mm, Tom Wilson, for 9 million bucks, Tom Wilson, has been, yeah, just not good. So, is it the goaltending at this point? I would say yes, it is. I would say Philip Gustafson, unfortunately, has to go, so... We will look to make a trade. Um, I don't even know what we're going to do here because I want to move Gustafson, but at the same time, I also want to see what's available on other teams' blocks. All right, so I think a guy we're going to take a shot at or a stab at at least is, um, is on the Seattle Kraken and Taylor Radish, and he is up to an 88 overall. He's one of their best players, actually, but at the same time, two years left, 31 overall. We'd add some age to this team, but at the same time, would hopefully make us a little bit better because we have not been good. So we could send, like, I'm okay sending away Jeremy Pignot in this deal if we sent him. Along with, like, uh, who do we want to move? I wouldn't be against moving Connor Timmons. So it would clear up some space for players, but... If we went Timmons... Pino, and I would very, very much at this point like to get Philip Gustafson off of the team. That would be an approved trade, but what do they have for goaltenders? They've got a high elite in David Cron, who they took in the first round, so they're not going to want to trade him, but how about Lankinen? Okay, Lankinen's won 22 out of 45. I would not mind picking him up. Does that go through? It very well might. So this is a big team trade. We're clearing up a last minute kind of contract in Connor Timmons, which he's stuck around. He's won a cup with us, but at the same time has not been that spectacular for this team overall. I'm okay with this. All right, so let's try this trade. I don't know if it's going to go through, but it should. I don't see why it wouldn't. And, you know, maybe we can potentially add a draft pick onto here. If we can get like a the third rounder too much? I would assume a third rounder is too much. And it's not. Perfect. All right, so we make a pretty big deal there. That's a six-player trade. We add Taylor Radish as a power forward to this forward group. Um, and yeah, this, uh, this should be interesting. So let's make more roster moves. I'm going to bring... I kind of want to bring Marvin Strong up, but at the same time... I really wouldn't mind a guy like Todd Shanahan or somebody like that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring Strong up. We can't even do that. Okay. So who's getting sent down? Tim Bodie maybe? Or Peter Kubina? I would say probably Tim Bodie. So let's let's do that. Okay. And oh shit, Nashville cl claims Tim Bodie. So that was a terrible move on my part, but... Whatever, it happens. So, um, we've now got this power forward in Taylor Radish, who's going to be an interesting name. Doesn't particularly fit the team all that well, but at the same time, 
is hopefully going to look a little bit better than what we're currently working with here. So, we'll move Wilson out. We'll put Radish in. It's plus two. He runs a plus three on that second line with a sniper and playmaker. So, I do like how this looks, but at the same time, I don't know if this is exactly what we're looking for. I mean, Lankinen has won 22 games. It's what we want. So we want a goalie that can win. As far as defense goes, I think we run Brewer up as of now. And then we throw... Saffronov does not work there. Okay. I guess we, we end up throwing Marvin Strong in here. Nope. Again, does not work very well. Okay. Does Safranov at least work on this other pairing? No, he doesn't. Holy moly. Okay. This is not working all that well. Is that really the best fit we can get for Safranov? Like, I don't believe that. Oh, it is. It's because he's got no ability, so... Bit of an unorthodox looking defensive group here, but at the same time, Ed Bomeister's kind of been our best defenseman alongside Chitrin. So maybe we put those two together, see if Soderstrom can kind of carry a guy like Safranov, who should be good enough to play in the league, but hasn't really got all the experience he needs. Um, the goaltending's a big question mark still. And so our oh, special teams should be better than they are, so... So yeah, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why the team isn't better, but they're not. So we make a pretty big splash there as far as trades go. Um, Taylor Radish will hopefully help the team, but we've shaken things up here and let the team know, hey, you got to win games now. So we're going to simulate through March. I don't think we're going to jump in on the trade deadline. We make a pre-trade deadline trade. And we win three games heading into trade deadline, so that's a good sign. Gonna keep our current status. I want to just see who is potentially getting tossed up on the block here. Owen Power. Interesting name. Jack Hughes, again. Top forward prospect. We cannot offer. Um, yeah, there's just, we can't offer a whole lot here, so. And not only that, but guys are expensive, too. What would a Carter Hart trade look like? Wow, they would trade him for nothing. Quite literally nothing. I don't think we need another goalie. I, I think we're fine on that, but, like, we could easily get him for cheap. <laughs> Owen Power would be in exchange for Hayden, which we just signed in a first. Yeah, no, definitely not. Good try, though. Jack Hughes doesn't make sense with this team unless we ended up sending a guy like uh, Connor Bedard the other way, but again, I don't want to do that. Ekblad for any of those names doesn't fly with me, so yeah. All right, not much really in trade deadline this year, unfortunately, but, but yeah, the team is just, we're struggling over here still, but three wins, make it a loss, make it, okay, one game winning streak. Uh, two, three, four, make it a four game winning streak there. Not bad, not bad, but also not great. Um, how is Noah Bell doing? He looks potentially like a good player. Every now and then you actually find good players in here. It doesn't happen too often. Dustin Habsheed looks pretty decent. Bennett Reed's not going to be as good. Eesh. Not spectacular. Overall, Tuzolino, though, is going to be a, a low elite, which is great. Um, Is Ted Regier actually... Oh, he might be okay. We'll keep an eye on him around that 60-plus kind of range for picks. This draft has just gotten more and more disappointing as the year has gone on, which is unfortunate, but 
what do you do, right? Okay, what about my pinned players? Because we got some goalies that, yeah, fringe starter called that one. One year ETA, but fringe starter. And Leahy looking like a backup right now, unfortunately. So, would not even be surprised. And I just have not gotten a scouting report back on Lundberg yet. Skurbeck looks like a really good defenseman in comparison to a lot of these guys. But yeah, this is, I don't know, it's an interesting draft coming up. And we're on a three-game losing streak. Okay, there we go. One win, two losses, three losses. Okay, one win. Wow. Wow, we are... Oh, we're in a battle now for a playoff spot because we very well just might miss the playoffs altogether here. So... That's not great, and we are 39, 34, and 2. The Sim has treated us poorly this year, so we're not a bad team per se. We still got 80 plus points on the season, but that's also in 75 games played. So let's uh, let's see. I'm I'm hoping the Sim goes better, but it's it's not looking great here, and we lose lose out on two more points. Oh man, this team is done. They are not looking good. Markov out again. We are facing some serious adversity. We're two and eight. Like, come on, Quebec. Just just win a game. There you go. Okay, five nothing. That's confident. It's a little more confident, but there's still two points out of a playoff spot at the current moment. Out of a wild card spot, not just a playoff spot, a wild card. So we have really choked this season away big time. And uh well, up 2-1, up 5-2. Okay, if you don't win that, okay, 6-3. Thank God. Bedard goal and an assist. That has been missing all freaking year. Um, but yeah, we're right there with the Panthers and the Sens. And we just need to keep winning games, especially against Florida coming up here. New Jersey's bad, but they still might beat us. Okay, come on, boys. If we give up a goal. Oh, God, okay, Bowmeister scores. This is such an important game right now for us potentially making the playoffs. There we go, Byron Brewer. As I slam my hand into my microphone. Oh, man, this has been scary. Okay, that was 5-6-2, beautiful. Okay, 7-2 win. Who got the goals for us? Wow, five goals in the third. Okay, I like it. I like the winning. We haven't seen enough of that this year. If we can knock Florida off of their their horse here then we might stand a chance but okay up 2-1 up 4-2 we beat them 6-2 beautiful okay I think we might just make the playoffs still we got 88 points in 80 games we've gone on a bit of a winning streak here as of late I am slow simming every single game but uh yeah, no, this four-game winning streak has propelled us into that last kind of wild card spot, but it's also because I am watching every game like a hawk here. Okay, so against Toronto, 1-1 one, one game, 2-2 two, two game. <sighs> we got to win this game. Power play, Quebec doesn't go. Come on, boys. You're out shooting them. Get a goal. Get a goal. Come on. Mm, I don't like how close this game's going. Okay, we need the two points. I know I normally don't play very many regular season games, but this has to be a win here. We can't walk away with less than two points because we are struggling to land a playoff spot. So, All right, we're on Superstar in OT. This is probably going to be disastrous. <laughs> All right, here we go. OT. That's Scotiabank Arena. Let's see what we can do. And Matthews wins the draw. Oh, and Matthews is gone. Oh, my. Well, that didn't take very long. Give me a break, Toronto. Get out of here. Seriously. One freaking What? What was the point of the headphones? All I got to listen to was defeat. <laughs> Yikes. That was pretty bad. Um... I mean, we should make the playoffs at this point, but still, I, I would, 
Would have loved to have gone on a six-game winning streak heading into the playoffs and been a little bit hotter than we are, but... Okay, against Chicago, down one nothing, down 2-1. Can I even play on Superstar, or am I just going to get scored on immediately again? We'll see. That very well might happen, but... <sighs> this has just, just been a bad season, unfortunately, and there's not a whole lot we can really do about it. we got to just make the playoffs and turn it into a good season from there, because... There's nothing else we can do. I've made trades, tried to make the team better, and they haven't performed. So, face off here, but Dart's going to lose it. All right, here goes Christian Tamernes cutting in. Onto the backhand, rebound to Keller. He can't do anything there, and we are playing the most conservative hockey being down a goal ever. Goodness me. Okay, that was too close, but fortunately Keller's going the other way here. All right, Keller back to Bowmeister, over to Chitrin, off of the shin pad. Good defense. Bowmeister up to Tamernes, hits Keller in stride. Keller cuts in, chance across there. That was a good chance, too. Didn't go. All right, Bedard picks it up. Here comes Bedard through traffic, over to Radish. Taylor Radish can't get the shot through. Chitrin misses Bowmeister, great. Oh, come on, Tamernas is 6'5 and over 200 pounds, and he just gets bumped off the puck like that? I don't think so. All right, here comes Radish up the middle. He's going to tee one up. Good shot. Oh, Tamarna's bury a rebound, buddy. Here goes Shane Wright, making it look too easy. Shane Wright looking across, can't find the pass again. They just, they intercept freaking everything, and it's annoying. Oh, here we go. Shane Wright, nice little pick. Cuts in. Oh, man, he just missed that, too. All right, Soderstrom back to Chitrin, up to Thorson. Okay, give me a break already. I get it, it's Superstar, but when I've got a 90-rated player skating in on an 80-rated player, there should be a difference. Over to Thorson. Oh, man, Chitrin just about got that one. Didn't quite, though. Oh, good hit there. Barrett Hayton, that's beautiful. Chance out in front, Thorson still can't bury it. Come on, man. Oh, where is the pressure? Okay, Terry coming down on Lander. Good poke check. Okay, if that's not a penalty, I don't know what is. Like, that was a full-blown charge. But anyways, looking for a chance here. Oh, God, missed the net by more, hey? On a freaking tight in backhand chance there. Okay, Troy Terry finds Robertson, I guess. Dude, what is going on right now? Safranov misses his guy. How is that in the net? Can I get a break, please? Because, like, I've had grade-A chances. And what do we do? We miss the net. We shoot it right into the goalie's chest. Curtis Douglas, who's like a six foot eight power forward who can barely skate, gets to the front of the net and puts it in from behind the goal line? Like, come on, man. What am I watching right now? This is just a freaking joke. It's a sad joke, actually. Yeah, Ortiz is not there. Go figure. Safranov through traffic. Can't get it through. Okay, what are we doing? What is that fucking bounce? Go, Ortiz. Close quarters. Make it... Freaking count! Come on! Safranov over to so What is that? Switch to your forehand, my guy. There you go, Kubina, finally! Kubina and Byron Potty combined for a goal with 4 minutes and 48 seconds left. Brutal!
Just brutal. I can't believe how long this has taken just to create some actual chances. I mean, it's a good play. Great pass, but... Where's the first line? Where's the second line? These guys have not been engaged in the game, and it's going to end up costing us another early playoff exit. Alright, Kirby Doc. Good poke check there. Okay, that's annoying. Alright, here we go, Bedard. Connor Bedard. Seriously? Sorry, Seth Jones. I thought you were 84 rated. Apparently not. Great pass. Yep, great pass. Sets us up for getting scored on. Kirby Doc just got laid the fuck out. That was a huge hit. Okay, Zadina. Alright, Zadina, you ready to go? I'm done. I'm done with this stupid game where I can't break out. I hit a helmet on a wraparound on the boards. Stuff like this. Like, come on, man. Alright, we're down to a minute. Chichirin through traffic. Can't get anything going. Christian Tamernes cuts in. Can't get a shot off. Bowmeister right in front. Great chance. Shane Wright looking around. Holy defense. Seriously, I wish I was that good at defense. The AI is a bit ridiculous today. Seth Jones lays his guy out. We suck. We suck. 20 shots, 4 goals against. Great game, guys. You suck. <laughs> okay, so there you go. We should call ourselves the Quebec Norweeks because we're so bad. 12 goals, 51 assists. Shane Wright's going to have the best year out of the team with a 63-point freaking season. I'm pretty sure Sim Engine scoring has been set to high. Am I not mistaken? No, I'm not mistaken. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, Sim Engine scoring's on high. May as well set all of this to freaking low because of how our team's playing. Oh, my God. Okay, so, anyways, um, talk about a, another back-to-back -back abysmal years for the Nordiques. We squeak into the playoffs in the best division in the league. Nobody finished with under 80 points. But we also didn't have the best team in the division as far as the New York Rangers go. They got 52 wins. Um, Dallas was pretty good. But, man, we, we just we suck. That's the only way I can put it here. So, All right, regular season's finally over. Um, obviously, we didn't finish any of the owner goals. And, oh, we get to play the Rangers first. The eight one and one Rangers. All right. Well, this is gonna be fun because um, I'm expecting to just get brutally murdered again. So, all right. Um, yeah. Nobody was fantastic. Taylor Radish had the third best year on our team and scored all but 15 of his points on Seattle. <laughs> Ricard Thorison drops off significantly from his last year's pace. Doesn't break the 40-goal mark for just the second, third time in his career, I guess. Um, he's still a goal scorer through and through. 257 goals is a lot, but the team just stunk. They were just not good. And was it the goaltending's fault? Not necessarily. No, Mike Georgievich was pretty darn solid and didn't see any statistical growth Kevin Lankinen, on the other hand, now was pretty bad for the eight games that he played in Seattle. So, I don't know what it is. Is it a goaltending backup curse? Like, what's going on here? So, Jesper Wolstead, howdy do. Okay, that is a nice, nice performance from a low elite goalie. Hellebuck, 38. Vasilevsky, 37. I just, <laughs> I just don't get it. Why do certain goalies play so much better than others that like don't necessarily have x factors and stuff like that couldn't tell you so anyways um let's just go through the league leaders for scoring i went through goalies already dry sidle 
118 points. McDavid, 115. Only a handful of guys break that 100-point mark. Mark Shafley at 36 is one of them. That's interesting. Okay. Um, Antoine Vareau, another pretty solid player there. And who led it the league in goals? The Silly Pod Colson scores 68. My goodness. What about assists? Make it 78 for... Chifley, and then I guess Vero must have been playing with McDavid or something, because yeah, that's that's a pretty darn good season there. So Lucas Raymond at 70 as well. Rantanen is good. What about de defenseman? Ryan Merkley, 72 points. Not bad. Kale McCarr was very subpar. Okay. And yeah, Owen Power was actually pretty good too. I don't think we had any defensemen anywhere near that. Yeah, Chitrin had 48, Bomeister had 45. Oof, that's a that's a rough year. Adamski is the best player there. Bo Hendricks actually has a pretty good year for the uh, Golden Knights. Grant was okay. Who else were like top picks? Granlin wasn't that great. Fissette, again, later end kind of player. 36th overall. Dakota Vandenbush. Maybe we should have taken. Uh, actually, we didn't get the shot at him, I guess. Because we had. Uh, what's his name instead? Grace Ortiz, 28 points. But we, we took uh, Christian Tamarinas instead. So. So, yeah. Anyways, that's where we're going to wrap it up. It was a, yeesh, a bit of a strange season here. But what do you do, right? You just got to beat the Rangers. And the Rangers oh, are likely going to have the beating of us. So. Yep, that's, uh, oh, Nick Backstrom playing in that team. Don't know why. He is not not looking nearly as good as he probably should anymore. Um, Adam Fox is a great defenseman, and the goaltending is all over the place. Okay, interesting, but uh, I would say we still have a shot. We have better players in every position compared to this Rangers team that finished first. So I'm feeling a potential upset in the playoffs. How about Tucson, though? Ian Crane, 98-point season. 90 points for Enroth, 82 for Peverly. Thompson scores 63 in his rookie season there. That's really good. Muldeen scores 51, goes up to a 78 overall. We've got a legit team down here in the AHL, but... That's AHL, not NHL level, right? So, Ian Crane, oh my god, he's just gotten better and better every year. Okay, he, he's got to make the team this upcoming year. I can't not play him in, down in the minors anymore. Or I can't not play him in the NHL. I, I have to stop playing him in the minors. Dayarnay was easily the best goalie there. Uh, as far as defensemen go, Shanahan put up 57, but wasn't anything crazy. And... Alex Ovechkin still playing in the minors, what? Scores 90 points. That's pretty crazy. Okay, but Ian Crane was just simply the best in the league. He He's good. He's a good player, so. Anyway, 63, 14, and 5. Oh my goodness, Tucson was head and shoulders above the rest of the league. Literally 15 points ahead. That's crazy. That is a whole 8 almost eight wins so yeah uh tucson's legit the the nordiques really are not but um yeah anyways that's where we're gonna wrap it up for this one if you guys did enjoy make sure to go down below drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads and of course make sure to leave comments to possibly get featured but that's gonna be it for me hope you guys enjoyed and until next time